So recently we had Tomb Raider up to bat to see if it can break the curse that all video game movies sucked. While it had a valiant attempt, pretty much safe to say right now that it struck out. But now we have Rampage on Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So how did it turn out? Well, let's find out. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's good, everyone? I want to thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Rampage starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I really do appreciate it. So now we have Rampage, and I remember when I first saw the trailer for this movie a number of months ago, I was like, oh my gosh, wow, this is Rampage. I remember this game way back in the day in the early 90s when I was a little kid. Of course, this was a, a, a arcade game. I really don't remember this being on any uh, game consoles like Nintendo, Sega Genesis, or Atari, or anything like that. I uh, strictly remember this being an arcade game. Now, to be honest with you, I did not play the game that much, but the times that I was at the arcade, I do remember seeing a lot of other people, a lot of other kids my age, younger, older, and all that good stuff playing this game. And it was just about a bunch of random giant monsters that was oversized that would just come rush into the city and just destroying everything in their site, building after building. I mean, it was just a concept that really didn't make sense at all. So when you take that concept, how are you going to be able to translate that over to a movie? Well, the first thing you can do right is, you know, cast Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And, you know, it's pretty obvious, but he was pretty much the best thing of this movie. Um, like, you know, when I, when I saw the trailers, uh, like I said, I remember this when I was a little kid, but I was not that excited about it. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm sure it'll make some money, but this, you know, idea, this concept does look stupid. And, you know, I wish the studio would spend their money on other material. So when I was going into this, I really had low expectations. But, you know, when the film started off, it started out, you know, running. It didn't waste any time. You got a good sense of what was going on and that the technology and biology and things like that, you know, all the chemistry and makeup and, you know, this genetic thing and that genetic thing that is pretty serious and not anything that you want to mess around with. I mean, very early on in the film, you know, they, they set the tone very well and let you know that there is an imminent threat coming and, you know, you better strap up or you're going to, uh, you know, be in trouble. Now, this movie is being directed by Brad Payton. Um, if you're familiar with his work or not, he has worked with The Rock before in 2015 with San Andreas. I did see that film and I did like it. A lot of people give that film a hard time, but, you know, for what it was, I really did appreciate it. Uh, appreciate that film excuse me and something else that i really do appreciate with this film is you have the concept you know uh, of the movie that you know monsters you know get infected with this biochemical weapon they're in large they go to the city wreck shop destroy everything and we have to stop them it's a very very simple plot you know in the actual video game it's a very it's even more simple in this movie but nothing is wrong with that um, but while I just said I appreciated something, something else that I do appreciate with this film, besides the, the plot and the story just being so simple, is that the a substitute for that was giving you characters that you actually really care about and that actually take time to develop. And I'm even talking about the monkeys or or the uh, the animals. I call him a monkey. He's a gorilla. Let's talk about George, the, the white ape and the, the white ape or the white gorilla in the marketing material and the trailers in this movie. He was freaking fantastic. He has such a great relationship with The Rock. He felt like a real person. He really just didn't feel like an animal. And I think that's one reason because, you know, the the gorilla was able to do American Sign Language. So we were able to, you know, get some type of dialogue from him instead of just a bunch of, you know, gorilla ape noises. So that's just something that I really didn't expect is having, you know, actually caring um, about the the uh, George the gorilla. Something else that I found fascinating about George was the visual effects, the CGI that went into developing him on screen. It was freaking fantastic. Um, you know, that's never, that is something I always pay attention to, but that, that's nothing that I went to this movie thinking uh, that would uh, stand out to me. It's like, oh, I bet this movie is going to have, you know, fantastic visual effects. That's just nothing that crossed my mind when I was preparing for this movie. But when I was actually sitting there watching it, I was like, you know, wow, you know, they really did do a good job here. And while I'm talking to you now, I was trying to scroll through to see if I can find what, um, what visual effects studio put this together, whether it's ILM, Industrial Light and Magic, which is George Lucas's company. I don't, I can't remember if he sold it or not, or Weta, 
with a digital those are that's the visual effects company uh that did the cgi the visual effects works for the uh, rebooted planet of the apes series uh that andy circus is most popular for but you know the the effects were great there um george was great Dwayne the rock johnson was great too he wasn't just some big you know hulking guy you know just in another action movie and you know when you think about it that possibly could get old, but not with The Rock. I mean, he's great in everything that he does, and there's nothing different here. He's great in this movie, too. Another great cast member that I want to talk about that I thought was fantastic was Naomi Harris. Now, she first popped on the screen for, on, on the scene for me. I said screen. On the scene for me, I think it was in 2009 with her movie um, Ninja Assassin. Uh, I'm a diehard martial arts fan. And yeah, Nidj Hanay was Mika in that film. She did a great job there. She did a great job in this film either. She was more of the brains that was going on. And she is a very, very uh, beautiful black uh, chocolate sister from uh, England that I would not mind uh, getting to meet. But she did a great job as well. She was very smart in the role. She was very intelligent. Uh, I liked her dialogue. And the last cast member that I want to list that uh, was also very well is Jeffrey D. Morgan. We all know him from Watchmen. And of course, right now he is Negan in the Walking Dead uh, series, which I do need to finish. I'm on the last season right now. I watched the first episode of the new season, but uh, I'm behind right now because I just kind of lost interest in the show. But anyway, D Jeffrey Dean Morgan isn't in this uh, movie uh, beating over animals or people uh, in the head with Lucia with baseball bats wrapped with barbed wire. His name is Harvey Russell, and he works for one of these government agencies. And, you know, he has pride, and you can possibly understand how The Rock will have pride, too. You know, he's such a big dude. And when these two men are, you know, going face-to-face, -face, trying to have, like, a penis measuring contest, you know, it's funny. Now, that, that's typical. We always get that type of interaction between men, you know, and uh, two big men, prominent men, in films like this. And so so that can get old either. But no, the film itself is somewhat self-aware and kind of makes fun of itself. And they also kind of throw in Naomi Harris in the scene right here, too, where, you know, they're both kind of just, you know, trying to, you know, see, you know, who's the toughest and things like that. And I like the dialogue that is going back and forth in between these two and the added, uh, the added humor that Naomi uh, Harris was able to deliver as well. But I said humor. That's another great thing about this film is it's funny. And I am a stickler when it comes to uh, comedy and movies and action movies. Like you can throw in many jokes as you want, as long as you don't ruin uh, serious moments. I'm really not a big fan of, uh, of jokes doing serious moments. Uh, while people are engaging in battle in the middle of war, in the middle of a showdown or something like that. And uh, that's nothing that you have to worry about with this film Rampage. Um, the humor is, um, you know, it lands uh, when it needs to. It's very clean. It's very funny. I laughed. I, I didn't just chuckle. I remember one time in particular, I, la I was one of the loudest people in the theater. Um, you know, I wasn't trying to be obno obnoxious or anything like that, but the joke was funny. You know, and I, I laughed my behind off. Now, another thing about this, this is an action adventure, uh, you know, kind of fantasy science fiction and action adventure science fiction. You could throw fantasy in there as well. And when it comes to movies like this, I get really annoyed when there is a forced romance going on. And you could possibly imagine that that would happen between the Rock's character. And his name, by the way, is David o Okoye. Uh, he is a primatologist. Uh, his name is David Okoye. Um, he has an unsurable uh, relationship with uh, George the intelligent gorilla which I was talking about before that but back to my point what I was saying was um, you could possibly imagine that there would be some type of forced romance or chemistry in between Naomi Harris and Dwayne Gerard Johnson but while there is chemistry in between their characters um, there is also a dash of romance but I like the perfect amount that they added to the film because they don't shove it down your face and they're not just making out and kissing or anything like that for no damn reason you know just you know just for the hell of it um, I will say that there was not enough time in this movie for their relationship to develop. However, if there was not a, you know, big monster, not mon well, yeah, big animals, um, you know, uh, thrashing the city, I could see them, these two characters, if in this movie, um, if they were real, that they could possibly, you know, go on a date or two and, you know, maybe hit something off. I mean, you know, you just had that, you know, that chemistry there. But at the same time, you know, I, I bring that up because usually if that's the case, 
you know, sometimes the director or the writer of a film or pro project, they'll force some romance in. He's like, is, is there really time to be making out right now or confessing your love for each other when, you know, Chicago is at stake right now where millions of people could possibly die? You know, we don't have enough time for that. And the film recognized that and didn't do that. So that's just another thing that, um, that I do appreciate. Um, again, I'll just talk about the dialogue again in this movie because it is pretty fun. Um, I like people that use their brains. I like smart characters. Of course, everybody does. And for the most part in this movie, you know, when things are, you know, um, getting kind of heavy and heated, you know, people do listen to reason like, OK, I guess what you did say made sense. So even though it sounds crazy, I mean, you are providing some type of evidence. So I am going to listen to you. So I'm just like, man, hell yeah. This is not just a dumb uh, action movie where monsters are roar all over the place. We actually have characters that I care about and characters that are making sense and not just human characters, but animal characters too. Now, of course, uh, this movie is near perfect, but there were just two characters in this movie that I just could not stand. Uh, I pretty much despised them. I mean, they ruined the whole film for me. One of them is the sweetest actor, Marlon Ackerman or Marlon Ackerman. She was in Washington. Um, and also Jake Lacey or Jake, uh, Jake Lassie. Um, they're in this movie. They are the two billionaires that develop this biochemical weapon that is making the animals uh, grow to uh, ridiculous rates and destroy the city and, you know, mutate and all that good stuff. But seeing that they are supposed to be uh, billionaires and, and behind this company called Energine, you know, that, that just has all this technology, they both come across as stupid doofuses. I mean, well, not really um, Marlon's character, Claire, but um, her brother, yeah, her brother, Brett Wyden, played by Jake Lacey, Lassie. I, I don't understand why they had to include him in the film and why they wrote him that way. I mean, I don't know. I guess they just wanted to have kind of like, uh, when I think about it, I don't know how serious you would have taken the film if this would have been just some nefarious villain to were like, I'm going to get my monsters and take over the world. Well, that really wasn't serious right there. That was kind of like off Inspector Gadget or something like that. But what I'm trying to say is, while I understand they were trying to give this film a light, fun tone that you could possibly take serious, uh, they went a little too far with his character in particular, making just him just too goofy. I mean, this, like, he, I mean, come on. I, I mean, for the most part, I mean, we do have millionaires and billionaires in this country right now that have a lot of money that are just dumb, dumber than a box of rocks. But at the same time, for the most part, somebody that's in charge of this amount of resources, please give them some type of intelligence. And they didn't. And that's pretty much uh, one of the things that I really did not like about this film was their two characters. It was, it was very annoying and it did bring it down just a little bit. But guys, what are you here for? This is Rampage. When you got a freaking giant gorilla a flying wolf and a, a mixed crocodile alligator hybrid with spikes from hell, you know, uh, jacking up the city, destroying the city. I can't even talk. So how did it turn out? How did the animals look? First of all, back to the CGI. The CGI was great with George in the beginning. It was even greater with George in the end and the rest of the animals too. The, the, the visuals in this movie was freaking uh, fantastic. Uh, I, I was loving it. And, you know, they had so many uh, close up shots so you can see the details of the uh, of the creatures. But they also had a bunch of uh, shots pulled away, a bunch of wide shots to where you can see all the detail as well and see how agile they're moving. And the thing is, is they give you a nice reveal of the monsters at the end of the movie. I mean, you get to see George all the way throughout. But the alligator crocodile hybrid with the spikes from the depths of hell and the flying wolf. They tease you with that throughout the film, and it doesn't waste any time either. Um, I mean, this film is an hour and 44 minutes. It could have been an hour and 30 minutes because when they're giving you action here and there throughout the film, I mean, you're satisfied, right? But then there's like two sections here, so I was like, man, this section right here is not ne really necessary. You know, it's giving you more story and character development and more reasons why you would like to rock in Naomi Harris's character. I mean, some true depth there, but you know, they, uh, you know, it's not needed, but it's appreciated. You know what I'm saying? But 
when they're sampling pieces of you to you throughout the film of the monsters and then they just reveal it in the end and all these wild shots you're like okay wow you're like this is a really damn good movie you're like i'm really enjoying this i mean and, and and like think about it why would these monsters be in the city why would they be trying to climb buildings like why would they do that that doesn't make any sense well, the film, like, it, it is simple. It does have a simple plot. It gives you a valid reason as to why they're doing it. And I'm just like, okay, hey, you know, suspend my, uh, my, suspend my disbelief just a little bit here and there. And, you know, hey, I'm in for the ride. I'm in, I am enjoying, you know, all of this. And, like, that's just the visuals, but the action itself, it delivers. I mean, I was very entertained seeing them destroy these buildings, jumping from here and there, seeing the army and all these armed forces just letting loose all their ammunition and firearms, just giving them all their capacity at optimum levels, just, like, you know, just, you know, emptying the clip in tanks and things like that and fighter jets, and it's just not stopping them. I'm just like, man, hold up. You know, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. You know what I'm saying? But then, you know, it gives you all that, and then you think it's over or whatever. And it's like, you know, with the people trying to take them down, but it's like, okay, wait a minute, that's not working. And I'm not going to spoil it for you here, but The Rock feels some type of responsibility for what's going on, even though he's not responsible. But he is like, that is my Gorilla George, and I have to save the day. I have to save Chicago. So when him and George team up, Versus the other, I mean, you can like fill the building up and you know it's coming, and as it's coming to you, somebody may have just jumped on the scene on the screen and be like, Hey guys, all right, y'all was patient for the first 75 minutes, but I know y'all are ready to see these marks to smack down now. Well, here you go, five, four, three, two, one. Here you go and enjoy it, and then just building up. I literally was like, Sit back, I'm like, Yes, bring it to me, and I was just eating it all. I love that. <laughs> like for real for real like i, I mean I, I was smiling like i'm smiling right now because going into this movie with such low expectations and being so entertained um by just such a simple plot but you know hey if it ain't broke don't fix it if it's simple hey that's fine whatever you know they really did uh deliver the goods in this movie with the action uh from beginning to end you know i was like you know cheering and just like they did one little action beats where i was just like oh Oh, snap. I actually did that. And it didn't bother anybody because they were just in, as enthusiastic about the film as I was. This is a nearly perfect film. Um, I really wish this was filmed with IMAX cameras. I really don't mind going to the theater to see this again. Um, it was just that good to me. I'm not saying that it's the best thing in the world, but I was thoroughly entertained by this. It is something that I will be buying on home video when it comes out. I don't know if I'm going to be buying it on 4K because it wasn't shot with IMAX cameras or anything like that, but I am very confident that I will be buying this movie on Blu-ray in a number of months uh, so I can enjoy it for the rest of time. Guys, if I had to rate Rampage out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Yes, an 8.5 out of 10. Um, only reason I'm not giving this a nine or a nine point five out of ten is because those two stupid characters they kind of they, they were just too dumb and goofy for me and it kind of just put a damper on things. But other than that, guys, I loved it. But guys, that is just my opinion for Rampage during the reign of Y. Johnson. Have you seen Rampage or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also go to my website, check me out there, and uh, bookmark it. And also look me up on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all that good stuff is right there at the bottom of the screen. And I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, um, that is just my opinion for Rampage. Um, I really do appreciate it. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.